the hell does he think he's doing? Welcome back to my dark corner of this sick world. Please like and subscribe now before you forget. I think I'll do just that. Good man. Shockwaves opens with a revealing narration about a secret Nazi project. It is known that the bodies of soldiers killed in battle were returned to a secret laboratory near Koblenz, where they were used in a variety of scientific experiments. Dispensing with all that pesky mystery. But toward the end of the war, Allied forces met German squads that fought without weapons, killing only with their bare hands. We then meet the sole survivor of some sort of disaster. I don't know how long that dinghy floated around with me lying in it. Dispensing with all that pesky wondering who's going to make it. So we know what's going to happen and who'll live through it, but we'll watch the film anyway. Not that I'm complaining, mind you. I'm only doing my job. We open with a pleasure cruise. No sense putting any strain on that crankshaft. I'm trying not to, but Brooke Adams is sunbathing again. Always good to see John Carradine. I mean a broken down old tub that should have been retired years ago. Hey, he was in Stagecoach. Weird stuff happens. Jesus, look at the sun. Looks fine to me. And they run aground on a reef off an island beside the decaying hulk of another wrecked ship. They go ashore. You know, I keep asking myself if this is really happening, if this isn't all a bad dream. Then I realize it isn't a dream anyone would believe, so it must be real. Okay, firstly, it's not a dream because it's not believable. Secondly, you ran aground. That's pretty easy to believe. But before they even reach the shore... <gasps> John Carradine is already on to his next bad movie. They head for the stately home at the centre of the island. Dangerous tropical fish are only kept by movie bad guys. Why have you come to this place? I know that voice. And now you have found me. Carradine out, Cushing in, and they really do have to find him. We don't see him clearly in this initial meeting. I am near, but also far. My stand-in is near. I am already on the plane home. Apparently this was five days work for Cushing. I'm guessing one day for the actual interaction with the other actors, which we'll get to, and four days of wandering around every location they could think of. He's been here! I feel like I've been on a tour of the island. There is danger here. Danger in the water. He's right. While this is going on, beneath the sea, shenanigans are afoot. Something in jackboots is coming out of the wreck. This would be quite the surprise if the narration hadn't flagged it 30 seconds in, and the underwater Nazi zombies claim their first victim. <laughs> I mean, that was mostly the sea urchins. Which is odd, because when his body is found... Jesus. The sea urchins are in the SS! Now that would be a film. With two of their company dead, an obvious question springs to mind. Why is it you have not left? The ship was damaged and aground, but so far no one has made even an attempt to repair or refloat it, which, in increasingly dire circumstances, I'm tempted to say I would try. I've had enough of this. It's now time for Peter Cushing's big scene and some explanations. You know, we Germans developed the perfect weapon, the soldier. Well, this was covered by the narration, but Peter Cushing. We called in the Toten Corps, the Death Corps. Are we the baddies? Not dead, not alive, but somewhere in between. Unfortunately... But problems arose, they could not be controlled. That is one you want to iron out in the beta testing phase. <laughs> but seriously, this is why you hire Peter Cushing. Freddie Francis, who directed Cushing eight times, once said, Peter is the greatest guy at delivering unbelievable dialogue and making you believe it. Which is an underrated talent. You mean to tell us these things have been underwater all these years? 
and a rare one. I don't want to beat up the other actors, but it is worth noting that Cushing is the biggest name in a film fathoms beneath him, and he's the one taking it seriously. What kind of story is this? He is the consummate pro. If I see any of you at all, I will shoot on sight. Now get away from my collection of mirrors. Having fulfilled his function, the remaining crew find a boat. Yeah, this looks much better than the one we came in. Uh, maybe you should all get in? Keith, we're sailing! Uh, more me than you, but still. Cover! What did you say? Ugh. Boy, these guys can't keep hold of a boat. Irritating tourist Norman panics and runs off alone. Only to be forcibly baptised by an underwater Nazi. The remainder decide to hide in a meat locker, though Chuck is not keen. What's with him? Four people are dead and we're being hunted by Nazi zombies, but no, everything's fine. Chuck, what's the matter? Obviously he's also claustrophobic, but it's still a profoundly stupid question. I just remembered I left the iron on. Open the goddamn door! After this pointless interlude... <laughs> Only Keith and Rose remain, finally recalling that they came here in a boat. There goes another one. This one they catch, and even though I saw the start of the movie, so know that only Rose survives, I'm on tenderhooks to see who makes it. No! Stupid film. Well, aren't you curious about it? Thanks for watching. Please check out our top 10 Peter Cushing horror movies. What other actors can deliver nonsense with this sort of authority? Let us know in the comments below. Let's get the hell out of here.